Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Now in this video, I wanted to go over the new release from Anthropic, that being Claude 3.5 Sonnet. It is insanely powerful and I think a model that a lot of people are talking about right now, but there's not a lot of YouTube videos on kind of like, you know, the new feature, which is the artifacts, really helpful when you're coding, and also just kind of the general benchmarks and the intelligence of it. So this video is just gonna be like kind of a quick rundown, an overview, a recap of what happened, and we're also going to try and build an actual Chrome extension only using 3.5 Sonnet, and we're gonna get Claude to code it all out, and then we're gonna just kind of run it, see what happens, and I'm gonna walk you through A to Z of that whole building process. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, as you can see here, this model came out June 20th this year, which is four days ago. And I'm not actually sure if like the model got released publicly or just this paper came out. However, regardless, it's extremely new. Claude 3.5 Sonnet from Anthropic. Now, oh, so I guess it was uh, four days ago. So today we're launching Claude 3.5 Sonnet, our first release in the forthcoming Claude 3.5 model family. Sonnet raises the industry bar for intelligence, outperforming competitor models, and Claude 3 Opus on a wide range of evaluations. Now, they're saying free on Claude AI and the Claude app. Obviously, Claude Pro team subscribers can access with, with a lot higher rate limits and $3 per million tokens. Um, so really, really good. You can see the little graph here. We have Claude 3 Haiku, um, Claude 3 Sonnet, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So you can see same cost per million tokens. However, just an incredible boost in intelligence. So it's just a lot more natural, a lot more fun to use. And I can definitely see a lot of kind of beginners who are getting into interacting with these language models and actually starting to learn about AI get less frustrated when using Sonnet because just from my like brief testing that I've done so far, it really does just feel natural and it's easy to talk to and it's just a pleasant experience, which at times I was getting annoyed with Claude 3 Sonnet because it just, it would have these little like blips where it almost wasn't making sense and it was rambling a little bit. I mean, as GPT does, of course, if you've kind of, you know, used it for any length of time, you'll know what I mean. But I'm finding with 3.5 Sonnet, at least so far, there's a lot less of those, which is really nice. Now, this is kind of like the main graph that has all the data in it that's super interesting. So you can see obviously 3.5 Sonnet is in this entire left-hand column here, while you have probably the most notable competitor, GPT-40, right here. So the only two places, according to Anthropics, you know, data collection at least, they're measuring, the only two places that GPT-40 outperforms it is an undergraduate level knowledge, and it only beat it by 0.4% there, and in math problem solving, where it beat it by a slightly more convincing 5.5%. So those are the only two places. And if you'll notice on the left-hand side, all the green here is where 3.5 Sonnet actually took the cake. So it is incredibly proficient in completing these tasks, as you'll see when we get into this project. Vision is incredible. And as you can see here, visual question answering, chart Q&A, and document visual Q&A are extremely high. So this will be very, very useful for the use case of say uploading a large pdf this model has a very large context window so it can digest like an 80 page pdf and actually create charts and diagrams on that pdf where of course gpt 40 has been able to do this for some time however in more complex use cases with like embedded text and different fonts it doesn't read it that well and it actually won't output the correct data and a lot of the time it's Annoying because you just have to go in and clean it all up again. But for my PDF testing, which I'll probably make another video on and probably Corbin AI, if you know that channel, you should go subscribe to him. Insane AI content, but he'll probably make a video on it as well. But 
I'm very curious to see what my testing kind of yields as well with document analysis with Claude 3.5 Sonnet. However, that is going to be an area of high value, I think for sure. And now this is the part that we're kind of going to analyze today, this artifacts feature here. So artifacts on Claude, it's a new feature that expands how users can interact with Claude. When a user asks Claude to generate content like code snippets, code snippets, text documents, or website designs, these artifacts appear in a dedicated window alongside their conversation. So again, one of the really annoying things when you're coding a big project with GPT-40 or 4 or 3.5 or any of them is that the code snippet that you ask it or like debugging your code or whatever it is, it's just output directly in the chat. So it's, it's just not that nice because you're left kind of like scrolling up and going, oh, okay, this is the correct snippet I need and copying it. And it just, when you get deep into a project, it's like a total nightmare. So these I can see being a total game changer and they have been from my brief testing. So dynamic workspace where they can see, edit and build upon Claude's creations in real time. So super cool. Here's a quick video here. Yeah, you have the future preview. Right, here we go. So this is the artifact on the right-hand side here, this pop-up window. Right, so you get the idea. It's that little pop-up there. So now that we've kind of looked into what it is and we know a little bit about what we're getting ourselves into and we're educated on what these artifacts are, let's jump in to Claude, obviously right here. You can see in the bottom, we're using 3.5 Sonnet and we have artifacts turned on. So you can see, you just toggle it on right down here. We want to make sure that we do have those on. So we'll turn those on right now. Make an account if you don't have one, very simple. And in this video, I was thinking it'd be fun to build out like a Chrome prompt suggester or prompt creator extension. So we're going to build out the V1 in this video. We're not going to actually publish it on the Chrome store until next video, but we'll be able to click on, you know, our little extension up here and we'll get a little bubble with our prompt creator and we'll get like a high level ish prompt from it that we can copy and paste into whatever LLM we're working with. So that's going to be the goal of this video. And I oftentimes have to intervene when these models are writing code and I have to fix it myself and I have to write kind of like slightly cleaner code after it gives it to me. However, for the purpose of this video, I don't want to do that. I literally just want to copy and paste what it gives to me. And if something's wrong or incorrect, I want it to have to fix it itself. So we're just going to be coding in English. And I mean, as Andre, you know, Carpathy said, who was like the lead, I, he, I believe he's left now, but he was the lead, like, you know, engineer, founding engineer at OpenAI. He tweeted that English is the new hottest programming language, and it really is. And anyway, I'm going to illustrate that in this video. So for our first prompt, again, we want to create a Chrome extension for prompt engineering prompt creation. So maybe we'll go, I want you to act as a, okay, so this is going to be my first prompt. I want to give it as much detail as possible and not work kind of like step by step just to see what it'll give me. So I said, I want you to act as a professional software engineer specializing in Chrome extensions. My goal is to create a Chrome extension that asks the user what their goal is. And then based on the goal, writes a professional prompt engineering level prompt that will tell any LM exactly how to act and yield the best possible output. Use the role, task, examples, notes, framework to yield the prompt and make sure that it is as detailed as possible. I want a modern UI that has a copy prompt button and a generate prompt button. So let's enter, let's see what it gives us. So you can see here, here we're actually getting our first examples of artifacts on the right hand side here. Now we have a download to file and a copy contents button, which is really nice. I was hoping they'd have those. Okay, so that's cool. We actually get a file structure 
That's actually quite nice just to kind of visually see what we're working with. Now we have our manifest pop up HTML right here. Okay, cool. Styles. Perfect. Pop up dot JS then our prompt generator JS. This seems like a great start. So let's just hop into a blank window right here. Okay, fantastic. Now I have all our files in here. These are every single file that it created for us in these artifacts right here. Copy and pasted all of them. We have our styles prompt generator. So let's see what it actually gives us in the prompt generator here. So we have a function called generate prompt and we have an object called role task example notes. It says you're a professional prompt engineer with expertise in crafting prompts for large language models. Good, generate a detailed high quality prompt based on the following goal, size language, perfect, yeah. And then we're gonna return all of the things that we actually need here. And that's looking, I mean, decent enough from just a really quick glance. Um, cool, so let's actually go to our HTML here. Let's click go live and let's see what it's doing here. Okay, so we have our LLM prompt engineer. Okay, I like it a lot already. And to your goal here, I want to create, um, I want to create a innovative for my small plant store. Okay, so nothing's happening when I click generate prompt. So let's actually go back into here. Instead of doing anything ourselves, let's go back into here. When I run the locally and button, nothing happens. Let's just say that. Let's see what it does here. So it says in manifest it added the type module service worker background JS. Now, did we have that before here? Let's see, manifest. No, we didn't. So it's added this type of module right here. Perfect. Let's see what we have to do here again so maybe we actually have to say again we're just like going over it one by one oh there's an issue here all right let's prompt it again let's try to get a new artifact out of it that will have the appropriate changes that we want so that it will actually start working as necessary here so as you can see this is actually incredibly cool something i, I just i didn't even realize this was a thing so we have a preview right here so we don't even have to run it locally yet. So I put everything into VS Code and I'm running it on port 5501 right here, right? So I'm running this on my local host. However, this is not necessary. And I think this is something that is extremely valuable for people that are slightly less technical and people that don't want to get VS Code and maybe people that are on development teams that just want to do something quick for like the UI and send it over to the developers. So I can see there being a lot of decent use cases here. So let's see if this will actually like run live. I want to Okay. Okay, nice. So we actually have it now. That's awesome. Open the file in the web browser. So they've just simplified it into, okay, I didn't want to download it. Now they've just simplified it into one actual HTML page. So if we just do this and go over to our prompt generator here and we update this, what if I just said hi? Okay, so it works. That's really cool. So let's try it again. I want a marketing plan with emphasis for my 
small boutique plant shop in Vancouver, BC. We definitely didn't have to add Vancouver, BC, but so again, we have our role here nicely outlined with a colon right there. Your professional prompt engineer. We have our task examples. So I can see for our examples, they're very vague and they aren't specific to our actual goal here. So that could be something that we ask Claude to change as well, which I assume would be extremely easy for it as it's literally just in, they're just hard coded right here, right? These examples. So, or they're actually just up here. So we could add like a hundred examples and then use like a math dot random uh, element function in here to actually pick one at random. Or we could actually use these kind of strings right here to actually dynamically input the goal and then create a new prompt around the goal dynamically kind of a thing. So a lot of options here, but that's one thing I'm noticing right off the bat. Let's see the notes. Use clear and concise language, include specific instructions. Um, encourage, this one's really good. I'm actually very surprised to wrote this. Encourage the LM to think step-by-step -step when appropriate. Um, that's awesome. Now, click copy prompt. Nice, prompt copy to clipboard. We actually even get a little pop-up there, which is very cool. Now, if we start a new chat and just copy and paste this in, let's see what we actually get from our prompt generator. So we're getting like more of a calendar kind of a thing. Oh damn, three messages remaining until 7 p.m. They're already cutting us off. They don't want to see us win. So creating a comprehensive marketing plan for a small boutique shop in Vancouver. The plan should be structured as follows. Define the primary and secondary target audiences, demographic. Okay. Yeah, decent enough. I mean, again, this is something that we made in like, you know, like 20 minutes or something and not even the worst UI in the world, easily modifiable LLM prompt generator. And again, this is the kind of thing where when we actually upgrade this and I get in here and I start to work on it, cause I think it'd be really fun to actually push this project a little bit and make it something really, really cool. It could even be part of my micro SaaS series. And we actually turn this into a Chrome extension I think people that just want to dip their toes in the water and actually get good outputs from these models will find a lot of use in it. And also it's probably going to be slightly more fun. I mean, maybe it'll be slightly less convenient than like having two tabs open and copying prompts from one tab and putting them in to your LLM. But I think it'll still be really, really cool. And again, something that outlines how powerful these models are getting at writing and running code. The new artifacts feature from Claude is extremely brilliant. I don't know who at Anthropic suggested that or put their hand up in the board meeting, but shout out to them because I can see myself and my kind of network using this a ton. And I can't wait to show this to more people. Now I'll probably cut the video here. We've already gone on. 25 minutes. Thanks for sticking around. If you have, I hope you've gained something at least slightly valuable from this video. Again, connect with me on LinkedIn, Instagram, shoot me a message if you have any questions. I'm so happy to talk about AI, coding, these models, anything in more detail. I could talk about it for hours. So I really hope you enjoyed the video and make sure you stick around for part two, probably coming out tomorrow or the next day where we take this one step further and get a little crazier with it. So again, guys, thanks for watching. Take it easy.